It's the Daily Dog. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the Daily Dog. Thanks for being here today. I think I have a special one for you on today's episode. We are going back into the Daily Dog vault for an excerpt from one of my extended play lounge episodes that I recorded right at the beginning of February of 2022. This was my very first time listening to any Led Zeppelin album from start to finish. And we did Houses of the Holy because that's the one that our Patreon community selected. And I very much enjoyed the listen. And I wanted to excerpt for y'all today their song, Rain Song. It is it is the second song on the album. It's written by Jimmy Page and Robert Plant. It is the longest song on the album, a beautiful love ballad. And uh, it's one that sticks out these uh, few months later after recording it as one that I very much enjoyed and have listened to since. So here is some pre-recorded video footage from my Extended Play Lounge reaction to Houses of the Holy by Led Zeppelin and their song, Rain Song. Just in this ear. It's over a G. That's a cool chord. It's still over a G. Really cool guitar sound. This is the springtime of my loving, the second season I am to know. You are the sunlight in my growing, so little warmth I felt before. It's an evocative lyric, and I love the guitar sound. I watched the fire that grew so I think he's playing two different guitars. There's a guitar track in this ear and a different guitar track, it sounds like, in this ear. Four major seven. There's the Mellotron. So the G goes down to an F sharp, make that a G major 7, and then G7 with an F natural. And what is that chord? Oh, minor 4. Back to 1. Pulling the heart strings with that one. Why is he doing that, that slide? Because it doesn't seem like he's re-attacking everything. Maybe he's just sliding on the neck. Is he bending the pitches on the, on the guitar? Flat six, I think, an E flat. 
Hang on. So the main little idea, uh, think of a G being on the top. And if you're playing and the G, like uh, it's a G major chord and you've got the G doubled in the top voice. So it's a G major chord. The, when the top G moves down to an F sharp over the same chord, it makes it a G major seventh chord. The root's still there, but you're changing the quality of it, right? So when that F sharp moves down to an F natural, then you've got a G dominant seventh chord and it becomes a little more unstable because of that diminished fifth between the third and the seventh of the chord. And then normally that would resolve to four, which they've done some, uh, which is the C chord. But in some of these, they're going in st uh, from a G7 chord to an E flat chord, uh, is what it sounds like to me. Still over G in the bass, which an E flat chord does have a G in it. It's the major third of that chord. Uh, but that's what it's sounding like to me when they when uh, they go to that interesting little chord. It's a great sound. Um, really cool. I'm going to keep going. First it was the springtime of my loving, now it's the summer of my smiles. Speak to me only with your eyes. It is to you I feel this too. It's a great scene. so hard to recognize, These things are clear to all the time. It's like they're connecting. It's a beautiful love song. Definitely a ballad, right? And they're connecting um, these seasons, springtime and summer. And then later he'll get to more of that. They're connecting. Really, really great. They're connecting these seasons to the changing ways of uh, relationships, excuse me, interpersonal relationships in this enduring love. Progression is great for perpetuating uh, an emotion and letting it stay and continue. It's the same thing from Hey Jude, the end of Hey Jude by the Beatles. It's this really great extension that allows people just to kind of revel in a moment for a long period of time. Still not impressed. But I'm going to reserve judgment.
that's an interesting ending. Huh. Hmm. The, uh, they were in G towards the end, and I think they were playing a G7 chord, but they flatted the fifth. That's what I believe they were doing there. I don't believe it was a sharp four in that in that weird arpeggio towards the end. Um, that's a real interesting sound to go to, y'all. You're you're ending the song. You're gonna park the piece, uh, and they're already playing with a little bit of of unresolution with with including the seventh in there, uh, but making the the fifth of that. Uh, chord flattened. Why would they do that? I'm looking back at some of the lyrics in here, the last little verse there, these are the seasons of emotion and like the winds, they rise and fall. Okay. This is the wonder of devotion. I see the torch we all must hold. This is the mystery of the quotient. Upon us all, a little rain must fall. The mystery of the quotient. Upon us all, a little rain must fall. Hmm. Well, the, um, the perspective of the song, it's a love song. It's about a relationship. And I think they're saying that we need to expect and uh, understand that even though uh, a relationship or a love can be strong that some hard times and emotional turmoil are still going to be part uh, of a love that lasts from season to season, right? That, um, you know, just uh, just a, uh, an encouragement maybe to persevere through those times and not uh, lose, um, you know, commitment to your partner. Uh, upon us all, a little rain must fall. So, um, you know, hold your umbrella out uh, for your partner when those times come. Maybe. Uh, I'm going to move on, though. That was a lovely second song. I really liked that.